Hi everyone, this week we are going to be learning about a new class of numbers called complex numbers. So, we let's start by tracking the development of numbers. Um, in terms of their hierarchy, um, where uh, maybe possibly hierarchy is not the right word, but development of numbers, we, oh, we start with the counting numbers, right? These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc which now we call them natural numbers, right? These were obviously the first numbers to be used because we are counting things around us, like, you know, five fingers, two hands, etc. Then the next big development was the introduction of zero, right? Which created the system of whole numbers where, where because of the zero, now you have this place value system, which means you can write these numbers using just 10 symbols. And these are called whole numbers. Now, once you have the zero, you in, there is an introduction of negative numbers because now you can say that there is this number which when you add to a number gives you zero, right? So you have a bunch of these negative numbers and positive numbers, which are together called integers. The next thing to, to be introduced was fraction. What if, you know, you're not interested in a whole object, but one half of the object. So that led to the development of rational numbers, where what are rational numbers are numbers of the form P over Q, where P and Q are integers. Okay, your common examples are negative one seventh, three fourth, 10 over 11, etc. Then it was found that these numbers are still not enough to answer many questions. For example, if you draw a right triangle of sides 1 and 1 and you measure this, this comes out to be not a rational number. Okay, meaning this number cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. So this led to the development of these new kind of numbers. So this length is actually root 2. So you add radicals and other irrationals like pi, etc. And these then form a more complete set of numbers, which are called real numbers. Now, real numbers are the ones that you see on the number line or you see on the axis. These are called the real numbers. And then it turns out that many, many hundreds of years later, um, there was a need for another kind of number to finally complete the picture is that with real numbers, we still do not have a solution to this equation, x squared plus one equals zero, because if you try to solve this, you end up with x squared equals negative one, and x is square root of negative number. So square root of negative number is not defined as a real number. So this is a completely different type of number which has a very distinctive behavior and so we give it a special name. So we need to define this number. Um, so the idea is, is to define a number which is a solution to this equation x squared plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a little different in the sense that we are not saying that here's a number and it's a solution to this. We are saying here's an equation, I want a solution to this and I'm going to call the solution something and I'm going to say that that is the new number. And that solution is called or is written as I, I which stands for iota um, or imaginary is defined as a solution. So I is a solution to x squared plus one equals zero. What does that mean? That means if I plug in I, then this should be true. So I squared plus one is zero, or I squared is negative one, that's a relation, or I is the square root of negative one. So what we have done is we have defined the square root of negative one to be represented by the symbol i. 
And it turns out that once you do this, you have defined all negative square roots. How come? Let's see. Because square root of negative 4 can be written as square root of negative 1 times square root of 4. But this, by our definition, is i, and this is 2. Similarly, 64. This is negative 1, 64. This is 8, and this is i. So, here it's a, it's a cool thing that just by defining one negative square root as i, um, you have now defined all possible negative square roots. And now we define a complex number. A complex number is any number of this form. So as we have x and y reserved for um, real numbers, for complex numbers we often use z. So we write z equals a plus ib where a and b are real numbers. This part is called the real part of the complex number and b is called the imaginary part of the complex number. Here are some examples. So you can just pick and choose. So something like that, root 2 minus root 3i, 1 minus i. Um, so here, if you look at this one, then 2 is the real part, and 3 is the imaginary part. So when we write the imaginary part, or when we say this is the imaginary part of this complex number, we don't include i in it. We just include the number in front of i, just the coefficient. Root 2, so here the real part is going to be root 2, and the imaginary part is going to be negative root 3. Here, the real part is 1, and the imaginary part is negative 1. Now, similarly, um, any real number, if you take any real number, right, say so take 13, I can write 13 as 13 plus 0i, which means that it has a real part that is equal to 13, and an imaginary part that is equal to 0. So all real numbers are complex numbers. So all real numbers are complex numbers with imaginary part equal to 0. Okay? And so it's natural to ask, well, what if the real part is zero? Then we have something called purely imaginary numbers. Okay, something like 3i. So this can be written as zero plus 3i, and we can say that the real part is zero, and the imaginary part is three. So this becomes a purely imaginary number. Okay, so over here we're basically introducing complex numbers and once you look at a complex number, um, it has to be of this form. So it has to be a real number plus i times another real number. Okay, and that's a complex number in which the part without the i is the real part and the part attached to i is the imaginary part. That's it for this video. Now that we have defined this new type of number, um, just as we did previously with radicals and with rationals. Now we want to learn how to work with them. So how to do math with them, how to do algebra with them. So the next few videos are going to talk about how to add complex numbers, subtract complex numbers, how to multiply complex numbers, how to divide complex numbers, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, the takeaway from this video is you should know um, what a complex number looks like. Um, what the real part of it is and what the imaginary part of it is. That's it for this video. Thank you.